Hi there everyone, my name is Pirar Chuthani. I'm a resident physician at Stanford, and today I want to talk to you about a very interesting report that came out of Doximity, which is the social network for doctors, about the top medical residencies by specialty. And this is all specialties across like surgery, medicine, urology, whatever specialties there are. They broke it down and surveyed a ton of residents and they created this ranking system that I thought was really interesting and shed some insight into the overall residency experience. So if you're interested, stick around. To get some insight into this, again, I want to point out that this is based on an uh, article out of Doximity. Doximity, as you may know, is a big social network for doctors and usually most doctors start joining it in medical school and then as they become physicians they stay involved with it. And in this they surveyed over 62,000 residents over I think at least a five to seven year time period and they asked them questions about their residency experience and they compiled a lot of the results into a unique survey that I'm going to share the results with uh, for you now. But if you're interested in checking out this source I'm also going to link it in the description below so you can access it and see the primary literature. Just know that the basics is that there's around 62,000 reviews that came out and they took surveys of residents on Doximity from August 2015 through July 2022. So as I said, around a seven year period where they ask residents a bunch of questions about their residency experience, about their specialty, what they liked, what they didn't like, ask them to rate their residency out of five. And basically, uh, based on that five point scale, they then created this amalgam of data which we're going to share and they ranked um, residencies in unique ways that I thought was really insightful and so that's kind of where we'll be going throughout this presentation. So now here is the list. They basically as they surveyed these residents they asked them to rate these residencies out of a, a score of five um, and basically highest residencies are at the top and then as you see going downwards are lower residencies. But notice that overall, almost all residencies got great ratings. The fact that one of the lowest was 4.4 out of five is still like incredible because four means like they enjoyed a like lot above average and five is just they enjoyed a lot. So all that to say, these are all residencies that are ranked here. The things that are not included is fellowships. Uh, residencies are usually things that you apply to right after medical school. So things like internal medicine, neurology, uh, neurosurgery, urology, and you can see that they're kind of listed here. But the things that are not listed are usually the fellowships, such as cardiology and GI, because to do those fellowships, you actually have to do a residency first, often in internal medicine, but even general surgery is a residency that's a prerequisite for certain types of fellowships down the road. But notice the other thing is that proceduralists tended to be the most satisfied. So they did have lower scores for schedule flexibility, uh, but the procedural specialties, which are right around here, or, um, uh, ENT, orthopedic surgery, uh, those tended to be higher because I think they get a little bit more satisfaction from their job because they can solve a, a problem that they see. Similarly, the lifestyle specialties, they're often known as ROAD, R-O-A-D, radiology, ophthalmology, anesthesiology, and dermatology. They sat in the middle of the pact for overall satisfaction, and that's probably because they have much more flexibility uh, in terms of um, work hours and their scheduling, but they probably don't have as much for like career guidance and culture. Anytime I have quotes here, it means I'm taking it directly from the article, so I don't want you to misinterpret anything I'm saying as my opinion, just mostly from the article. But I'll just know that child neurology and med peds deserve a lot of credit for being the most satisfactory. I think child neurology, the point is that you get to work with these children and potentially work with their families as they're growing, and it might be very satisfactory at that point. Uh, and similarly with med peds, you often get to do pa pediatrics and you get to do medicine and follow a lot of people from you know, the pediatric population, even up to at the time they're adults. Cystic fibrosis is one of the diseases that tends to be followed by med peds doctors. All right, so this is how they rated uh, residencies by specialties. Notice that my medicines, internal medicine is right here. It's a bit lower on the list, which makes sense. It's a very grueling specialty, but I do think it's something that I've personally enjoyed thus far. Then they actually asked uh, residents and they broke down the data by the year, first year, second year, and third year. And you notice that the satisfaction with residency actually decreases as you get older. And I think the overall downward trend um, per, uh, kind of alludes to the fact that you're getting more and more responsibility every year, but you may not be compensated as much and you often feel like you're being worked to the bone. And so I can kind of understand where this like decreasing marginal return is coming from primarily because you get minimal adjustments in wages, all the while having much more expectations and responsibilities. So that's the overall um, overview by the specialty. Now let's talk about states. So now they broke down the data based on the states where individuals were rating from. And you can actually see that Minnesota actually is the highest rated state 
Um, this may be a little surprising, but it's not all that surprising when you consider that the Mayo Clinic is in Minnesota, and that's a powerhouse of a hospital, and they just take their jobs very, very seriously, and they're very good at churning out incredible, incredible physicians. Um, you can see North Carolina was second, and then Massachusetts was fifth. And the overall commonality among a lot of these things is that uh, Minnesota has the Mayo Clinic and a lot of affiliated hospitals in that region. You, uh, North Carolina has UNC and Duke all within a uh, three-point triangle, creating a research powerhouse. And then similarly, Massachusetts also has a ton of hospitals. So you can see that residents often rank places higher that tend to have a lot of hospitals in one place because they get a larger amount of diversity in their training. Uh, you can also see that uh, when you broke it down by specific regions within states, um, the regions that tended to stand out were metropolitan areas. So within those regions, the San Francisco Bay Area was really highly ranked. I think it was the top when you break it down by area. And again, that's primarily because you get the research powerhouses of like UCSF and Stanford and Berkeley and the exposure to different types of medicines in those areas. So that's the broken down residency um, by state. And this kind of also tells you a bit about location and what works and what doesn't work for certain people. And now, last but not least, let's break down the percent of residents who stay in state after residency. And you break it down by specialty. And you can see that the highest rated ones are family medicine. And this means that 61% of family medicine residents tend to stay in the same state that they did residency when they become uh, they're, they're attending cells, right? And you can see that the specialties that tend to have the highest retention rates tend to be the ones that have the most spots. So if you study family medicine, there often are a ton of family medicine physician jobs because they're in such dire need that it's easy to find a job in the location that you did residency. So chances are you may just settle down there. On the other hand, when you look at surgeries like orthopedic surgery, ENT, urology, those are very specific jobs, and oftentimes not every place has an orthopedic surgeon. Only certain tertiary care hospitals may have orthopedic surgeons, and so even after you finish residency, finding a job at your specific institution may be tougher than finding a job elsewhere, and that's why it's easier to leave and go out of state. So all that to say, more surgical specialties, more specialized specialties tend to be uh, you know, a little bit more variable in that many people don't often stay in the same state after graduating residency. On the other hand, for a lot of uh, specialties such as like internal medicine, emergency medicine, individuals do tend to state in the same place that they practice residency because they can find a job in that area. And assuming you like that area and have found a family there, it ends up working out pretty well. So all that to say, hopefully this was insightful in terms of the top medical residencies by specialty, both um, based on like where the location was. But the part that I really liked is that this is data coming from the residents themselves rather than an external agency. So I think it holds a lot of value. Uh, and it just goes to show you the way that individuals perceive their residencies. And more importantly, it seems like holistically, any residency is pretty positively reviewed. The fact that the lowest is 4.4 is exceptional news and just goes to show you that residency is hard, it's challenging, it's grueling, but it definitely gets the job done. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, Comment, share, subscribe if you have any other questions, comment below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.